All right, so I thought I'd record my own video. We're gonna talk about unit circle and trig functions of all values, which is found in section 3.3 .3 of your textbook. So we're focusing on things that are not just right triangles. If we review, we started with right triangle trig, which was so Katoa, and we could find, as long as we could draw a right triangle with the angles we needed, we could find it at right, we could find the trig functions of any of those angles, and not just sine, cosine, tangent, but also secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So we just have to make sure we can do that for everything. So that's the point of looking at numbers that are basically bigger than 90 degrees or pi halves. So we have what's called the unit circle. We've talked about this a little bit in the past. The unit circle is a circle centered at zero with a radius of one. So one in all directions. So any distance from zero to T will be one. And what we look at is this part in red right here is the arc length which we learned to find last class, uh, last section. That arc length is related to the central angle. In fact, it's the same as long as we're in radians. So whatever 45 degrees is in radians will be what the distance of this is here. And if you recall, 45 degrees is pi force, which is about 0.75. So we're about 0.75 units away as we walk around here. If we were to stretch that out, it'd be about 0.75. So if we go ahead and look now, we can define all trig values in terms of this unit circle using these formulas. So cosine of s, which is that distance, or the arc length, which is also the uh, radian measurement. So we go ahead and look at this. We have these found on 110. The problems we're going to run into are when we divide by zero on these different functions, the tangent, the cotangent, cosecant, and secant. So let's take a look um, at the unit circle. Unit circle, we've seen before. It's got all these measurements that we've looked at before, 30, 45, 60, and 90. And because it's symmetrical about the origin, the x-axis, and the y-axis, we really only have to focus on the first quadrant of this. Um, if we understand all of these, we should be able to use what we've learned in algebra to get the rest of the function's values. Uh, so let's go ahead and look at what we're allowed to find, uh, the domain of the sine, cosine, tangent, cotangent, all the trig functions. So if you look at the sine and the cosine, and remember domain is just what you're allowed to put into the function where it exists. So we're looking at what numbers are we allowed to put into the sine and the cosine that will give us an answer when we come out of the sine and cosine. And for the sine and cosine, it's anything. That's the all real numbers answer. And we can write that mathematically when we put this parenthesis, which means up to but not including negative infinity to positive infinity but not including infinity because it's not a real number, you can't include it. So we have this notation here that shows us that we can use all real numbers for the sine and the cosine. Now tangent secant, those have problems when we are dividing by zero. And in, in just a simple way of looking at it, any number that's not an odd multiple of pi halves we're allowed to put in. So let's look at what the problem is with pi halves. So if we look here at pi halves, we've rotated up pi halves. So we've walked along here, pi halves. Pi halves refers to the 90 degrees. And if we look at that, the cosine is zero, x is zero because we're left and right, zero. And the sine is one because we're up one unit on the y-axis. So that's a problem when we look at the tangent because the tangent was defined as y over x. And if it's y over x and x is zero, we can't be over zero, so we have an issue. It even tells us the same thing in a calculator. If we turn it on and we try to type the tangent of pi halves, the tangent of pi halves, and we look at that we're in mode of radians, and the tangent of that is um, error in our domain. That means we put something in that's not allowed to be in our domain. So if we, we quit that, we can see that the pi halves is not in that. Now the, the directions here say all numbers, not odd multiples of that. So let's look at why. So if we start counting by halves in a circle, then we have one half, two halves, which is an even, but it's also just one, that would be pi. And then we go to three pi halves. Now we're down here, and again, x is zero, because we're left and right zero, up and down, negative one. And we could even go in the negative direction, negative 
pi halves or negative 3 pi halves will also give us, just rotate in the other direction, that x is 0. And that's what we have to avoid. So when we're at here or here, we have x equals 0. We're left and right 0. So we don't have anything we can put in the denominator, which causes us to have an anything. Mathematically, we write this all values s, such that s is not equal to 2 plus one, two n plus 1. That's 2 times some number, any integer plus one, the plus one makes this odd times pi half. So any odd integer, any odd multiple of pi halves is not going to work. Likewise, we can look at um, cotangent and cosecant. If we look back at the cotangent and cosecant definitions, cotangent and cosecant have y in the denominator, just like the secant also has x in the denominator for tangent. But we can't divide by when y is zero. So if we look at the unit circle, and the unit circle is y is zero when we're at this point or back at our regular point here at zero or pi halves I mean two pi so any even multiple any whole number of pi we can't we'll have a zero because we'll be here or here and the y values will be zero and as the y values are zero we can't divide by zero so those don't work and in the calculator, you can see this as well. If we tried to find the cotangent, that's 1 over the tangent, 1 divided by the tangent of pi, it will tell us um, an error. And the error this time is divisible by 0, because it could take the tangent of it, but it was 0, so you can't do 1 over 0. So it says there's an error. So we remember, oh yeah, that's a problem. We can't do that. It's not in the domain. So we have any number, not an integer multiple of pi. So any number that not a fraction multiplied by pi can't put in for cotangent or cosecant. This is going to become important when we look again at the inverse functions, but I think that's all for now. I just want to make sure you understand that. We'll go through some examples in the next video of using this information, finding exact values and so forth. So go ahead and make sure you understand this. Take a look at the book, see what it says on page 110 for those definitions, and I'll see you on the next video. Thanks.